yeah, a lot of people talking this week about billionaires, you know, wasting uh, untaxed money, sending people, um, you know, sending themselves into space on a vanity thing when there are all of these problems down here on Earth. Uh, very much similar sentiments that actually led to the cancellation of Apollo, for example. People talking about NASA wasting money when there was, um, you know, so, so much needs back on the Earth and so on. And I suppose that the space race element was also over at that point. Um, however, for people like myself who were born after the, the Apollo program, in fact, I don't think... I think it was 1972 when it ended. So I was born, you know, well after that. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, I've been waiting for my ability to go and, uh, you know, travel into space suborbitally to, um, you know, and, and not just for, as a joyride, but uh, just the idea of being able to travel from Tokyo to, you know, to uh, Panama, for example, in uh, 45 minutes. That's what you should be able to do on this sort of a flight. Just the ability to do that, the ability to go as a tourist and stay on a you know space station for a time, or go and stay on the moon for a time as a tourist. These were things that I expected as a kid that I'd be able to do by now, and I can't, and I'm annoyed by it. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I, I am super excited by the fact that uh, Branson and Bezos are both setting up in the next couple of weeks um, the first ever, uh, you know, suborbital flights that anyone can will be able to use. And the fact that, you know, while it is still going to be, you know, they're going to be set up as commercial ventures, self-sustaining businesses, so they are not going to be cheap because it's not cheap to set rockets, you know, rocket planes uh, up into uh, space at the same time, you know, the, by, by doing it and rolling it out, you know, and scaling it, there's the opportunity, one, to make it more accessible to people who are willing to shell out a bit of extra money, as well as, um, you know, the opportunity happening with Virgin Galactic, in this case, that they're offering sweepstakes to allow anybody, you know, there'll be people, if you donate to a charity, or even if you don't donate at all, there'll be the possibility for anyone, anywhere in the world, I believe, to be eligible to also get a ride on these and experience weightlessness and see the curvature of the earth. Uh, and so on, and uh, yeah, you know, I, again, this is basically what uh, um, the Mercury astronauts, at least the ones who didn't go into orbit, um, and, and the X-15 pilots experience, and uh, it's super exciting. To me, it's just, uh, it marks the beginning of, you know, ultimately what has to be where you know, all humanity is going to end up being at some point. So, you know, I, as a space nerd, I'm very, very excited by the fact that we have um, started now f um, making space accessible more to than just sort of governments and, and, and you know for the ability to people go up for people to go up um, yeah I'm I mean at the uh, um, tax justice issues aside you know um, that debate can be had separately I am glad that there are people um, who are willing to uh, invest in this sort of a thing and, and for the people who think that it's frivolous from my perspective again um, this is just the first step. I mean, logically, um, there is going to be a time, uh, might not be for, you know, hundreds of years yet, but there logically is going to end up a time where there are going to be more people living off Earth than there are on it, you know, and uh, I think it's super exciting to be living in the time when we start to have people, I mean, I, I would think that at least within my lifetime, there are going to be people living um, on, on at least on a settlement sort of a basis like on a permanent uh, quasi permanent basis on the moon and on mars at least and probably in space stations as well i think that could happen within my lifetime still um and i i would even be thrilled to live on a space station you know uh, I, again knowing that it, the idea probably seems a lot better than the reality i mean effectively it's like living in a submarine uh, floating around in space, uh, exposed to radiation, it actually makes sense. There's nothing to give up on uh, from being older. It makes sense in some ways when you're older because the radiation that you're exposed to up there will affect you less. Um, but, you know, this is what, what my, my life stream is to be able to do something like this. So to me, I, you know, I don't see this as a waste at all. I think in the, the, the bigger scheme of things, um, you could look back at any significant innovation in history. You could think about things like the people who developed uh, electric, you know, electric power grids um, or, or motors or whatever. And, you know, you could say that those people could have spent their time more efficiently at the time, you know, working in fields or doing manual labor or whatever, rather than spending a lot of time frivolously making machines that at the time only a few people could afford and not everyone could access. But, of course, these were technologies and steps that represented, you know, things that cha transformed humanity. And I think that's the equivalent of what this is, or at least these are, these are parts of that. Um, so sure, you know, they are four minute suborbital, uh, you know, joyride, but um, I'm particularly excited at the idea, and this is something that SpaceX is talking about, about even having, um, you know, like 
jetliner scale uh, passengers the ability to get into. Uh, remember, it takes 90 minutes um, generally for an orbit at 100 kilometers altitude. Uh, what, they, what the, spa the space shuttle, I think, does it a little bit higher than that. But that means, uh, you know, anywhere on Earth is accessible in less than an hour uh, if you take that. The, the furthest two points on the Earth are 45 minutes apart in orbit, allowing going up and coming down again. Um, you think of how long you spend on flights. I mean, being able to get the double of being able to travel anywhere in the world in less than an hour, um, as well as being able to experience going into space and weightlessness while you do all of that. Uh, that is um, what I would love to do. So uh, to me, super exciting milestone this week with uh, the Virgin Galactic um, uh, and congratulations to them. I know that um, the, um, the, the they were sort of competing. Blue Origin announced that they would have the first commercial trip and journey into space, I think on July 20th. Um, and they announced that before Virgin Galactic, and Virgin Galactic heard that, and Branson wanted to be first, and so he announced after the fact, uh, after the Blue Origin announcement, that oh, we're going we're gonna to rush up there a, a week earlier. <laughs> a bit sneaky, but at the same time, I mean, if they can do it, they they they, they were able to do it, um, and they did it safely, and they came back. There was the other thing I think that uh, Blue Origin publicity was pointing out that um, the Kármán line, which is considered internationally the line for outer space, which is it's kind of arbitrary, it's a hundred kilometers exactly. Um, is considered out of space in most places. Out of space in most places, whereas in the U.S., I think they set the line at something like 55 miles, which is like 80 kilometers. And so the the the, the Branson ship went up like 88 kilometers. But it's objectively outside of uh, if you if you take it from where the atmosphere is exerting uh, less friction, you know, on the craft, and yeah, you know, it's basically outside of the atmosphere. That's what NASA considers space. It's, I, I, I think it's kind of arbitrary, the 100-kilometer mark. The, 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 the Bezos uh, space capsule and rocket will, will go slightly higher. But um, I don't think there's any question that the Galactic One... I think Blue Origin's pointing it out only because they're selling tickets that are competing. I mean, it's basically, which ride would you rather take? I'm curious for people who are interested in this at all. Again, assuming that you could get a ticket for a free ride on either one of them, what would you prefer to go up in a... Uh, rocket plane that drops, you know, gets carried up to 40,000 feet and is dropped from this enormous plane and then then sort of rockets vertically up and goes into space and comes back and lands like an airplane? Or would you want to uh, sit on top of a rocket in a capsule and fly, you know, maybe a bit more like what people did in the 1960s, uh, I suppose, uh, w w w with the first uh, astronauts going into space and parachuting back down to Earth? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, both have a certain sort of appeal. What I really like about the Virgin Galactic one is the idea that uh, it's a platform which, uh, you know, can use regular airports. They could actually set this up and have this going from airfields. I don't know. I, I don't know if they, they could use a like Haneda Airport for this, but yeah, the idea that they'd be able to do this from anywhere in the world, and actually, you could also use it as legitimate transportation. It seems a little bit more flexible than the um, old-fashioned rocket approach that Blue Origin is taking. But I'd be kind of thrilled to do either. I mean, my image was always sitting on top of a rocket, you know, like flying uh, like that one. So, yeah, it's a really exciting time. I am super into this, and that is great news. And that's the first story for tonight. One-way ticket to space. <laughs> Hopefully not. Um, Service musician, uh, Apollo 17 uh, in December 1972. Indeed, that's the mission where they actually met and docked with, uh, I believe, a Mir um, module in space with, with the Soviets. So that was... Uh, yeah, wow. did nothing but watch space documentaries when I was a kid. Thank you for that service musician. Good to see you in the chat, by the way. See you. We've got Believe in Yourself. Uh, you're on the moon every Friday night. Uh, <laughs> I hope in, in strictly legal senses wherever you live. Andrea Morboya, what is the cost of this experience? Uh, do we need to get a loan to do this? It's not actually clear how much it's going to cost. I believe it still is hundreds of thousands. Um, but we will uh, find out that the first person for the Blue Origin, there was like an auction. They paid like $28 million, but that was in an auction and all the money goes to charity. Um, and it turns out they're not going to take the first flight after all. They're going to take the second flight because they have a scheduling issue. But there you go. Yeah. Branson could sponsor me. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely figure out some excuse for to be sponsored for going into space. Uh, Katie and Eric. Um, would rather go in a giant slingshot. Well, that would be pretty cool as well. I think that the rocket would be similar to the slingshot. However, that's kind of the appeal of that. But yeah, 250K. Was it, someone find out it was 250K, was it? Yeah, yeah. It's like a very expensive car. But you know what? I, as much as I'm, I love cars, I haven't owned one for 23 years. And I feel like I could probably justify taking, a, you know, 100,000 or 200,000. Yeah, as a sort of a... I might have to be divorced in order to do it. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I feel like uh, I've probably saved that money somewhere over the years, uh, or at least somewhere I can mentally justify it. Uh